Good morrow, everybody. Today I'm going to quickly run through the basics of turntable photogrammetry using Agisoft's MetaShape program, the successor to Agisoft's PhotoScan. I'll talk about setup, solutions to problems I had, and how you might get free or cheap software. If you're unfamiliar with photogrammetry, it's a process by which physical objects, from small figurines to entire cities, can be digitized into 3D models using just regular old photographs and the proverbial elbow grease. Your models can be then animated, 3D printed, or used however you can imagine. I've used photogrammetry in the field to make 3D reconstructions of the fossilized footprints of our pre-human ancestors, but I'd never used a turntable or Agisoft for photogrammetry before last weekend. You don't need a turntable for photogrammetry, but I think it makes taking pictures uh, much easier than without. I'm making this video because I think the instructions and tutorials for Agisoft software are unclear, especially in regards to using a turntable, and in all honesty, some of their instructions simply don't work. If you've used their software and tried the banana on a box tutorial, you know what I mean. In the end, through trial and error, I figured it all out and I wanted to share it with you. Uh, but I'm no expert on photogrammetry by a long shot, so please feel free to share your input or questions in the comments. But really, the software is great and capable of some amazing results once you get over the mild learning curve. So let's get started with the setup. In my experience, there are three main elements to the setup. One, camera positioning, obviously. Two, lighting positioning. And three, the backdrop. Concerning the first two, uh, always attempt to emulate a dome. By that I mean that your lights should be positioned so that all surfaces of your subject are well lit and they eliminate as much shadow or blackout on the surface of your objects as possible. Lights above, lights on either side, and lights uh, as near the front as possible of the object without blocking the camera as well. It helps if all lights are of the same kind and the same distance from the object so that it's evenly lit and doesn't have any flicker. Additionally, you should film one full revolution of your object from at least two, but I recommend three points. Attempting to place your camera along a curved vertical line on an imaginary dome, as I've illustrated here with asterisks and dotted arrows. For photogrammetry, it helps to ensure that your camera can see 60% of the object that it could see in its previous position. I translate that as, all parts of your object should be visible to the camera in at least two of three camera positions. It also helps to zoom in as tightly as possible on your subject, but to maintain the same focal distance from your subject from all three points. Now to the backdrop. Metashape really expects the camera to rotate around its subject so that the software can use the change in background to inform the position of the subject. Static, unmoving backdrops are actually a big problem for Agisoft, so when using a turntable to rotate your subject, it's important to use a backdrop that contrasts your subject and that can be easily keyed or masked out later. I'm attempting to help the algorithms with the static backdrop problem by using my little calibration pad on my turntable, but keying and masking backdrops are the most important part, and I'll show you how to do that very quickly right now. So let's open Adobe Premiere, or your preferred video editor. We'll import the videos using Control-I. For the demonstration, I'm using Desiree's sculpture of our mascot, Tativilus, which I recorded early in the learning process and have not attempted to photogram before. So this will be a new raw experience for me and you. I recorded a separate video for each view, so there are three videos. From each video, we'll take one full revolution, which takes about 50 seconds on my turntable and we'll place it in the timeline. Now, to remove the backdrops, we navigate to the effects window and search for color keying, add it to the clips, select the colors we want to remove, and the color tolerance for the keying. I like to turn the tolerance up as high as possible without keying out parts of my subject. If one key doesn't get all the backdrop, I can add another key to take out the remainder. Parts of my lights and my room were visible in a couple shots, so I also had to mask out those areas. Now that our backdrops are masked away, we have to export the series of still images for Agisoft. I'll do that by clicking Ctrl-M while the timeline is selected. 
From the format menu, I'll select a file type that supports alpha channels, like PNG, or I prefer TIFF because it sounds like a cute girl. Only a couple settings really need to be modified here. Frame rate, which I set to 1 frame per second, so that there's 1 frame for each of the 50 seconds of video for each vantage point, for 150 total frames. We also want to make sure that Include Alpha Channel is selected so that we record our transparent backdrops. Then, name the file sequence and export to a location of your choosing. And we have a series of photos here. Now to Agisoft. I'm going to import the photos 50 at a time, placing them in these folders called chunks on the left of Metashape window. If you just drop files in the empty window, they're automatically chunked into separate folders. You'll notice that the backdrops for the tips appear to have returned. Well, Metashape seems to require us to mask the shapes again, but don't fret because the alpha channel is still associated with each file, so all you have to do is right click one image, hover over masks, select import masks, and in the pop-up dialog select format from alpha operation replacement and apply to entire workspace so that each file is now masked by its alpha. Super easy, right? You can see Metashape's representation of masking by selecting an image and clicking the reveal mask button at the top of the page. Now for the fun part, meshing and modeling our scans. All you have to do is select each of the chunks one at a time, go to the workflow tab at the top, and select line photos. I'll select medium setting for the sake of speed, but you should click advanced and have the mask set to key points, not tie points. If everything is masked and your photos are good, you should see a sparse cloud like this that looks a lot like your subject. Isn't it cool to see the digital representation of your camera placement relative to your physical model? I love that. Now this is a good place to show what happens without masking. I'll duplicate one of the chunks and disable all of its photos masks by right clicking them and selecting reset masks. Then I'll attempt to align the photos again. But as you can see, the results are terrible. If you did all the necessary preparation, but still manage to get poorly aligned cameras, you can reset alignment on those misaligned cameras in the image roll by right clicking them and selecting reset cameras. Then try to realign them again. I found that this almost always works, but not in this case of course, because Metashape is totally baffled by the completely static unmasked backdrop. Anyways, once all your chunks are aligned, we can go to the workflow and merge the chunks. The result is an accurate representation of the real world relative positioning of the camera's vantage points. But as it is, it doesn't really represent the model. So we select all the photos in the merged chunk, right click, reset alignment for all cameras, and then align them again immediately. The result is much better. Now let's build the dense points cloud. Simply go to the Workflow tab and select Build Dense Point Cloud. For speed, I'll choose medium quality, but aggressive depth filtering. Drop down the chunk menus on the left and double click the Dense Point Cloud to see a preview. Damn, that's getting pretty impressive. But it needs a little cleaning up in areas where no light or camera views could really get. So I'll select and hold my marquee tool for the option to use smart scissors. Then move around the subject like so, selecting, removing any unwanted points and particles using the delete key. Next, we'll build the mesh, which can be based either on the dense point cloud, which I recommend for better quality, or on depth maps, which are supposedly processed faster. Depth maps are like heat maps, 
that indicate the relative distance of an object or its parts from the observer, rather than the amount of heat. You can see Metashape's depth maps, it's kind of a tongue twister, by selecting photos in the image roll and clicking show depth maps in the roll or on the top of the UI. For the sake of experiment, let's see what the depth maps can accomplish. And that's actually much better than any results I've had so far using depth maps for meshing, but it's not a great model. Let's see how the dense point cloud compares at medium settings. First by setting the interpolation of missing points to the default enabled. Okay. It's a pretty similar result to the depth maps model. And I'll muse on Y towards the end. For now, let's see how the dense point cloud looks with the interpolation to extrapolate. Not much different this time, but the results have been more pronounced in other experiments. I encourage you to experiment for yourself. The mesh may not be great, but a lot of these imperfections can be washed away by building the texture. Just go to the workflow tab again and click build texture. I'm going to leave all the settings as they are, but make sure enable hole filling oh, is enabled yeah. in the advanced menu. Now that shit tight right there. That's about it for the main parts. Tell you what, let's take a look at some of my other photogrammetries that came out better. This is a high quality model of a raccoon skull from my personal natural history collection. Look at all that detail. This model has a lot of surface topology and a lot of uh, visual texture patterning on its surface, which I think helped Agisoft make a really good scan of it. This is my original character, Tomago, an alien weapon from one of the comics I'm working on called Starlight Alliance. This is actually the first photogrammetry that turned out well for me using Metashape. I put the symbol on his back because Metashape was having trouble with the topographically smooth and untextured flat expanse of his back. Much better models were produced using the symbol, but I think some better lighting could have solved the problem. Just for fun, I made a model of a DBZ piccolo figurine I picked up in Akihabara a couple years ago. I only used two vantage points for this model, but look at all the detail! That's because I was very careful with lighting, even though his most inferior surfaces weren't lit or scanned well at all. Now you can export the OBJs from Metashape and import them into your 3D graphics software for animation or convert them to STLs for 3D printing. But here, I've imported the raccoon skull into Maya, and something stands out. The scan is composed of thousands of random triangles, not uniform in size or shape at all, and certainly bad for 3D texturing and animation. Maya has built-in remeshing and mesh reducing tools, but they did nothing for my models. Luckily, I found this great, newish program called Instant Meshes, which is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux if I'm not mistaken. I'll include a link to the Windows version in the description because I had trouble finding it. Just open the program, select Open Mesh to import your OBJ. I'll use my beautiful raccoon skull. Select how many vertices the output should have, which I'm reducing by half. Next, choose your configuration details. Then select Solve under the Orientation field and Solve under the Position field. I'm not really sure what all the other options here mean, but those mentioned have been good enough for me. You might choose to select to keep all your sharp edges sharp. Uh, that's going to have some changes for your model that I'll let you deal with. Next, select Export Mesh. In the new dialog box, decide if you want a pure quad mesh or not, whether you want instant meshes to add extra vertex iterations to smooth the mesh, and when you're satisfied, simply extract the mesh and save. Let's take a look at how the remeshed raccoon skull compares to the original. I think it looks great, but if losing half your vertices compromises too much quality, you can always remesh your original. I tried it at the original vertex count and was pleased, although it doubles the file size. 
Now, I should tell you guys, not all subjects are appropriate for photogrammetry. As I mentioned regarding Tomago, very smooth, untextured surfaces are difficult for Metascan to work with. So, if your subject has similar features, you might try getting creative with lighting, or putting patterns or stickers on your subjects to give them some visual tooth, so to speak, for Metascan to grab onto. Other inappropriate subjects are transparent, or have surfaces with highly specular reflective indices, so most glass or metal objects are out, unless they've been coated somehow to mask the inappropriate qualities. I suspect the Tivola's smooth, round, and slightly reflective belly are responsible for his poor model render. But maybe I'll try again. I'm loving scanning all manner of objects, so there will be many opportunities in the future. Now, I promise to tell you how you might be able to get free or cheap software. The secret is to have a valid .edu student or faculty email address. If you do, chances are you can get free access to Autodesk programs like Maya, full access to Adobe Creative Cloud for only about $20 a month, and Agisoft's Metashape for a one-time fee of $60. But there are lots of totally free graphics, video, and photogrammetry programs out there, although some will certainly be better than others. Just scour the internet, experiment, and you'll learn everything. So, I hope this tutorial was helpful and helped you resolve any issues you may have been experiencing using Agisoft's Metascan for photogrammetry or using a turntable for photogrammetry in any program. Please leave any questions and remarks that you have in the comments. And as always, please like, follow, subscribe, share, and all that good stuff. Thanks again for watching and wear your mask.